And uh, welcome everyone to this licentiate seminar with the title Towards the Most Immersive Motion Capture Acting. First of all, I would like to start with a trend in uh, animation. And the trend is that animation should look more realistic and believable, especially when we're talking about human-like movements. So what is done usually is that uh, we bring into play motion capture actors. So motion capture actors perform a play, this is recorded and then mapped onto 3D characters. So this usually happens for computer games, animated movies or commercial spots. You see some of the examples here like uh, Swedish commercial spot, some of you might know it, Comham, or computer games, there is like many examples for it. Uh, also um, in, uh, in animated movies we have motion capture quite a lot nowadays. When we talk about the latest movies, animated movies, um, we see Gollum here from Lord of the Rings or King Kong. There's a lot of examples that we can see. <clears throat> Does anyone know Andy Serkis? Probably not. This is one of the main actors in, uh, one of the very well known actors in motion capture acting. But usually you don't see those people. You always see just a Gollum or some other person or character that they, he played. So these actors work in a very specific environment. Uh, a motion capture environment and what you have to know is that they are basically, as you can see in the picture there, stand in a very empty hall, very big hall, a lot of cameras around you. So you have a 360 degree recording. Every single movement that you do will be recorded. Okay? So this is very different to uh, stage acting or um, movie acting, theater acting, because there you usually have just one angle at you. And uh, you have usually costumes or all kinds of props that you can use for your act. Here you just have wooden props, metal props, or some uh, very simple cardboards that you use as, um, for your acting. So with this research, the first thing we wanted to know is what challenges do motion capture actors face uh, in their environment. So we ob observed um, three professional motion capture actors and 24 inexperienced motion capture actors. Inexperienced means they have acting background, acting education, but never did motion capture before. <clears throat> we also discussed with some uh, motion capture staff and directors about these challenges. So interestingly enough, inexperienced actors had a lot of the same reactions. So they were saying, why is there no one to act to? Or it's weird that there's nothing actually. What they mean by this is that the environment is quite empty, so everything that you are supposed to do is out of your imagination. So it is a lot about the skills and the imagination of the actors. We also observed that a lot of their movements or, or the character that they play looked very much, yeah, not so much believable, so, and not so natural. <clears throat> Furthermore, virtual content was very often overseen or just forgotten. So basically, right before the shoot, the director was pointing out, on this side there will be a car, over there there will be a tree. So within this area you have to act. So these things were simply forgotten during the act. Experienced motion capture actors do have a little bit, slightly different uh, challenges. A lot of their challenges were to adopt to movements and motions. So basically, challenging was for them to bring movements into the game on screen so that they look nice and natural and believable. So for some things, some motions and some characters, you have to over-exaggerate basically your movements so that they look nice on screen. <coughs> A lot of scenes also had to be repeated, and uh, so it could be for a simple shot that was just two minutes. Um, we had to add one, two, three, or four repetitions just to get that shot right. So everything was basically on the spot and changing the, so that the naturalness and the believability came in, in, onto the character. Even here, virtual content was off, very often overseen or forgotten. So, to help those actors, we were thinking about what can we do and how can we put the research focus on it. And the main thing we wanted to know is what in interactive system can we actually build to uh, create an immersive environment for them that supports them with their act. We also looked at uh, what, what kind of interactive prototypes can we develop um, that actually is usable in, within this environment and does not need a lot of setup for the crew to maintain the system. And one more was basically to find out what are the experiences with these prototypes. 
So we had a vision at the beginning that was we want to provide some acting aid with some wearable mobile solution, maybe controllable sound, and a variable fle very flexible and quick to set up uh, digital content. So to do this, we had uh, our approach was basically to combine computing and also interaction design methods to uh, get these computational prototypes. So we had, as usual, some problem identification phase, some design scenarios with the reality checks as well, some prototypes um, phase, and the testing, evaluation, and basically outputs. So if you, or contributions, if you follow the black lines, this is very much it's a little, a little bit simplified version, but it's basically the approach that you do in computing. <clears throat> but you also see there's a lot of blue lines and uh, arrows that go back and forth. So we were jumping between those uh, faces quite a lot to make sure what we're trying to think about or trying to develop is um, usable within the motion capture environment. Very first thing we wanted to know is to what is acting? Why do we want to know this? Because we want to understand the, the users of our system and that are actors. So if you, if you ask what is acting, it's quite hard to, uh, to, get an, uh, to bring out an answer for this, even especially for me as a PhD student in computing interaction design. So we asked um, acting teachers and uh, looked at a lot of books and basically what comes down to the point is that acting is storytelling. And, uh, Acting is a lot about creating the character and make it believable and have, give the actor some life, the character as well, and uh, some objective. So this ties into so that the character has a believable emotion and uh, a believable and truthful life, actually. If we look at this person here on the screen, it is Walter White from uh, Breaking Bad. And um, the question is, what does this what makes this character that natural? What, why is this acting so good? Is it because of the story or the character, how it is written? No, I have to add to it, it's Brian Cranston, which is the actor of this character. He adds a lot of um, life to this character, a lot of emotions, a lot of believability in what he brings into it. So we could uh, put Bruce Willis onto this scene, but it would probably not be the same, <coughs> even though he would probably do a good job because it's, and trained actor. So what we wanted to do uh, is to look at how can we support motion capture actors through these acting principles. So we looked at Stanislavski's acting principles. Stanislavski is one of the yeah, major people with that um, had built up acting principles and acting education. And a lot of other principles that came out of it um, basically was, were based on his principles. So we looked through them and found some, uh, some very simple things on how we can improve motion capture acting without even using technology. It's time to relax, time to prepare, time to rehearse, and time to create the character. That sounds very obvious, especially when we're talking about uh, acting. But the problem is, it is not done in motion capture acting. The motion capture shoots are very dynamic and very fast paced and that is also within their business. So that means characters or actors do not get a lot of time for preparation. A lot of things are actually done on the spot on the shoot floor or even changed. As a next step we wanted to know what makes a good motion capture actor. So we asked 18 motion capture actors and 10 directors, what is a good actor? What, does, what char characteristics does a good actor need? It's very good. What they need is a very good Im imagination because you're standing in this empty hall and you have to find out what is around you, how can I act, how can I use it? <clears throat> you need to have some know-how about motion capture. What are the procedures? When do I, what do I do before the shoot? What do I do after the shoot and during the shoot as well? You want to have some good physical acting and body language. Well, that's pretty obvious because what is captured is your body language and your movements. Good acting skills and improv skills so that you can act from, from out of nothing, you, you'll do a good performance. This is basically what you want. And some physical fitness. 
So at the end, what we want is um, a martial arts person that ha knows how to do stunts and also is a very good actor. That might be, even in Hollywood, ki kind of tricky to find. <clears throat> so if we summarize the challenges quickly, we can say there is a lot of short preparation times for these shoots. Um, it's very important to get the movements right so that they look good on screen. Um, you need to know the motion capture procedures and you need to be able to trigger your um, emotions quickly, adapt to different scenes and also shape the character on the spot. So basically what is done is that for one, one shoot you're in a desert environment and you need to be very aggressive. The next second for the next shoot you're in a city environment and you're in love with another character and in the next one you're very sad and uh, tired. Please do that now. So it might be quite challenging to get into these emotions and moods, uh, even for trained actors. So now we looked into how can we support those motion capture actors with technology. Uh, some things that come to your mind is, uh, are very obvious, which is sound, vision, smell, haptics, winds. There, there's a lot more on the list. So basically, how can we support these actors and uh, give them a nice environment around them so they don't walk in this triste environment? Uh, we focused a lot on the vision part. This is what, where we put our main focus on. So we created some initial ideas on how can we actually support those actors? What can we do in terms of technology? So we started with a very simple uh, setup. We place a few um, screens around the actor and capture the movements so that they can interact with the digital environment. It turned out that this is not a good idea, especially not in, a, in the motion capture environment. So the problem is, if you want to have some sort of immersive uh, feeling within uh, these uh, screens, they need to have a certain size. If you put them in on the shoot floor, first problem is you'll block the vision between the actor and the cameras. And you basically influence the the, the capturing of the movements, and that's what you do not want. <laughs> Another practical issue is there's a lot of cables and it's a lot of uh, uh, setup time that you need to do this. The next idea is basically we use projections, standard projections, projection mapping, or even ambient projection. <clears throat> Problem with this is it also takes a lot of setup time to do this. Another thing you need to consider, you have 36 cameras or less or more around you that can be affected quite easily by light. So you do not want to affect the motion capture at all. So this is what you do not want in this case. You can set it up, but it's very specific and uh, it might not help for every shoot. So that's why we thought we need a mobile solution. Where you actually, basically the idea is wherever you look at, the actor will see the digital content. <clears throat> can add some sound to it, maybe some specific projections that are just in a certain area. And we have a director or a motion, cap, a motion capture staff that uh, can control the digital content in a quick way. So if we look at the state of the art of uh, the vision part at least, we can start from this uh, very old one. It's 1962. Um, Sensorama is the machine. It's from Morton Heilig. And this machine can already do 3D vision, stereo sound, smell, haptics, and wind. It's a lot what we, what, what, what we actually aim for, but it's a little bit big and not very mobile, right? So not usable for our purposes. The next thing that comes into your mind is pretty obvious. It's hat-mounted displays, right? So one thing for virtual reality hat-mounted displays it's very tricky to use them in a motion capture environment. It has multiple reasons. For some simple shoots, you might even be able to use them. But you have to imagine you wear, for example, the Oculus Rift, which is like everybody talks about at the moment. Um, you block the complete vision of the real world, right? So this is what you do not want in motion capture acting, simply because there could be props in your way. You could run into um, other staff members, or if you think about stunts or martial arts, you probably do not want to hit your opponent, right? 
So it could be quite dangerous to use this. Another issue is these, it's not 100% tested yet what, what the result would be if you wear these for eight hours in a very fast movement, especially when you do martial arts or <coughs> uh, stunts. You could also think about AR solutions where you basically see the real world and um, put the digital uh, content on top of it. And, uh, the problem is at the moment most of those systems are still research prototypes and they're quite big as well. So for facial motion capture, it will not be a solution for you because you block a lot of the parts that you want for facial motion capture, the eyebrows, the eyes, and uh, this is, so it's also not a good solution for every shoot that you want to aim at. So therefore we, we try to create some prototypes and uh, explore what we can do in, in such an environment actually. So what we did is um, we used the cameras of the motion capture environment for tracking and created a 3D environment or a digital environment in uh, UDK. So on the top you see the actor moving and in real time you see the digital environment. What you can do is basically climb up some uh, stairs, you can crouch, go through, through the environment, explore it, jump, run, crouch, everything is possible and look around. It works, works quite well. If you see some delay on the picture here, that's because of the recording. It's not, it did not happen in real time. <coughs> so the objects that we placed there were basically at the same positions that where the digital content is. And it has the same sizes of uh, the room there actually. But one problem that you might realize is the actor is not wearing anything. He's just, he has just three markers uh, to, to get the tracking right. So he has to look at a screen like you would see up there right now. So the, the content is only there. So for the actor to see the content, he has to turn the head towards the, the, the screen. And this is what you do not want because this movement will be recorded and uh, that's something you do not want in motion capture. So we had to find a solution where you actually see the content wherever you look at. So that's why we created a hat mounted projection display. Basic, the basic idea is you have a laser projector mounted very close to your eyes and uh, you'll send out the digital image that you have on a smartphone it's uh, created in, in Unity, so portable to smartphones or mobile devices. So what happens is you shoot out the image towards a retroreflective foil. And it sh as it is retroreflective, it means it shoots the image back to the source. So it shoots the image directly into your eyes. So this is, it gives you a different experience. If I would project an image to this wall, you would see, okay, there's five meters of distance towards the, towards the wall. So the image is quite far away. In this, in this way, we project it quite close to you, so you have the feeling it's closer and I'm more into this environment as it would be in if it's just on the wall. An interesting part is as well, you can use it with multiple um, persons, so they can use the same screen. They could see the same content, but they see only what they see, what they project basically. You could also project two different contents here. <coughs> so what, it, what, it, what we used is basically a laser projector, a Pico projector. We st you can see it in, it's basically this format. It's kind of smartphone size. So we stripped it down to the very basic components that we need. Uh, we added a new battery pack, which gives us a life, an uptime to three, four, from, it was half an hour before, and now it's three to four hours. Um, it's a standard smartphone, some cables, and a standard hat strap, and uh, some 3D printed housings that we, w w what we basically used to create this. Um, with the smartphone together and the whole um, projector, it's around 400 grams. So the, the latest um, Oculus Rift that just came out basically uh, has 440, so we're a little bit below and even, there's even space to make it less and smaller. <coughs> so you'll see a quick video of this. 
This is an old prototype that you see here. So it, uh, the prototype is constantly evolving and it, it looks smaller and not that big as this one right now. <coughs> but uh, it has the same components on it, basically. The good thing is there is no facial occlusion. So all the imp important parts that you need for f um, facial motion capture or for standard um, um, shoots in motion capture are free. So there is no occlusion at all. We implemented a walk in place movement. So you basically can explore the environment and walk around in it. There's also natural movement that you can do to explore the environment. So you can look around and walk around at the same time. One problem we, f we, we faced there was uh, that the sensors in the phone, especially the accelerometer, is quite weak. So it does not give you the precise values that you want for a natural movement. It's for, for a simple walk in place, it's not a problem. But if you want to have forward and backward acceleration in a quite quick uh, way, this might be very uh, challenging. That's what we experience and a lot of other people as well. So what we're, we're trying to do in the future is um, use external sensors to overcome this issue. So as a quick summary, we can say we in investigated uh, current motion capture pra practices, also the needs and demands on, uh, on actors. What do they need and how can we support them? We also looked into um, what limitations are, are there in motion capture, what can we do and what does not work, and uh, what technologies are applicable for this environment, basically. <clears throat> Some design solutions is what we came up with, and uh, we developed a proof of concept prototype, which um, hopefully bases the, the, the work for, for further research and prototypes as well. So with our research, we hope that uh, we can support motion capture actors in a way so that they can concentrate more on their act and create the character and hopefully have more fun like this guy. <coughs> All right, that's it for my side.